What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of We Need to Talk. I'm your host, Melinda, and today I am joined by a very special co-host in place of Carmel because it is Carmel's birthday. I thought I'd give him the day off, but I'm joined by my bro, one of my favorite people, Drexel Hurd. Hello, everybody. No stranger to the We Need to Talk family. I am Carmel. <laughs> today he is Carmel. Yes. <laughs> Happy birthday, Carmel. Happy birthday, Carmel. This is my birthday present to you, being in your seat. In your right seat. Oh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's his birthday present? Yeah. How does that work? Well, listen. I'm replacing you. Happy birthday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Though Drexel does have a knack for wanting to take things in other people's lives. <laughs> listen, <clears throat> I don't take what is not handed to me. You you borrow. Isn't that what you said? I borrow. Or, no, you said something else. You said you don't take. I acquire. You <laughs> I'm always joking with him. He tries to take my friends, my life, my husband. <laughs> Listen, one step at a time. World domination. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I'm glad you're joining me today. Um, so if you have been hiding under a rock, then you probably don't know what we're talking about, but I can't imagine that you won't. Uh, we're going to talk about impeachment. the- Trump impeachment. Just kidding. Well, we <laughs> should talk about that, but I oof, I can't even go there right now. That man, oof. Ooh, another another episode for sure. But I do want to talk about the Amber Geiger case, Botham Jean, Botham Jean, excuse me, and recently what happened with Joshua Brown. So if you didn't know about this case, about a year ago, a uh, law enforcement officer by the name of Amber Geiger, she was coming home. She went to her what she thought was her apartment. We later found out thought there was an intruder inside. It was actually Botham John's apartment. Uh, she opened up the door somehow. She put a key in. It didn't work. He opened the door and was like, what the heck, basically. And she shot him and killed him. She realized it was not her apartment. And we finally just had the trial last week. Um, a lot of people were like, this is just plain murder. Like, how do you go to the wrong apartment? Now, I've been very disoriented in my life at times, but not enough to go to the wrong apartment. But we'll get into the details of the case in a second. So uh, the trial happened last week, and it was a very, it was, I think, about a seven-day trial. Um, I watched a good amount of it. I, I thought the prosecution team was incredible, and they did convict her of murder, which, you know, we were all surprised by that in the first place because we never actually see that justice happen, and she was sentenced to 10 years. And recently, uh, I think two, night, two or three nights ago, one of the key witnesses in the case, Joshua Brown, was assassinated, I'm going to say, in that same apartment building because he was a neighbor of Botham John. He lived across the hall, and he was a key witness in this case. He was murdered in the parking lot of their apartment building. So that's to give you just kind of a background of the situation that we're going to be talking about. But I'm going to go back a little bit and, and talk about the case. And in the things that you've seen, Drexel, do you think that the sentencing was fair in the situation? N no. Um... But I wasn't a juror. True. So true, true, I don't true. know like their deliberations. Right. Obviously from an from an objective standpoint, for, mm -hmm. from us not having been in the courtroom or from us not having been in jury deliberations, mm -hmm. um, how they got reached that number. Right. You know. Well, it started actually because I watched some jury interviews afterwards and it started that they put on 28 years on the table. Right. And then they got talked down somehow in their in their deliberations to thinking that that was too much and they thought 10 years would be enough. And 10, I think, is the minimum in Dallas. So um, they just wanted to give her the bare minimum for, for murder, which is interesting to me. Yeah, I mean, and you know, it's one of those things like we look at the justice system. Um, which sometimes, is anything but. <laughs> so, and sometimes, sometimes it works, sometimes yeah. it doesn't. Right. And um, especially when it comes to jury cases, mm -hmm. because you we're the way that our system is designed is that we are it, it's designed for us to trust our peers right to make those decisions yeah. like it's like to kill a mockingbird mm, you know mm -hmm. little and and so mm -hmm. so you you're that's a, a, you know and it's Dallas it's Texas obviously is a little bit more conservative obviously they're going to back police uh, uh as much as they can for and, sure. and, and and or <clears throat> decide with compassion right <coughs> for sure which for is sure. what i suspect probably got them to talk to, that's how they got talked down right and you know the thing that i found to be interesting that somebody mentioned um on one of the posts that i had on facebook is that the reason they think that there actually only was a conviction in this case is because botham john was actually a near perfect black man 
And it's interesting that you say that they said that because I had to go back and think. It's like this man was an accountant. He was a rising star in the company that he was working for. He was a worship leader and he was a friend to everybody. Like there was not a single person that didn't have a positive story. There was, they could, you, you know, they, they got the picture right. I mean, the picture of him, the show was in a tie, suit and tie, and he was smiling. So it, it, they were saying that they don't think that if there were any sort of uh, um, negativity that could have been um, portrayed against him when, you know, when you're doing these victim profiles, that we would have even gotten this verdict. And I thought that that was very interesting because he was the quote unquote ideal victim for, you know, at Black Lives Matter to actually get justice in this case even though people don't view it as justice because it was only 10 years but we're surprised that we even got that far yeah i thought i remember at some point hearing that he was eating ice cream in his apartment watching football watching football but wasn't he somebody i read somewhere he was smoking weed at the same time i don't know but even i, I he heard was, that part of the narrative right so i, I assume they tried to interject that as the part of the i think you're right now point. that i'm remembering i think you're right that they did try to interject but i, I don't know what happened with yeah. that but it clearly didn't affect anything right um because when you looked at every i mean he did, did so much volunteer work. like he was just a good pillar of the community and there really wasn't anything that they could have spent like okay you're smoking even if you are smoking pot at home that doesn't mean that you should get murdered. In right, your house. right. You know what right. I mean? Like, what were you trying to spin in saying that? Right. But like I like I said, I've been disoriented before. I've definitely taken naps, woken up, thought it was Sunday, whatever. But I've never been in a position where I didn't know where I was as far as my apartment or gone to the wrong floor of my building. I mean, I don't I've I mean, I don't drink, I don't smoke or anything like that. So I don't know if it's possible, but apparently she was sober and that just this just happened. That's yeah. what's so bizarre to me. Yeah, and she said that she had worked a twelve hour day. Twelve hour day, yeah. And I'm like, people work twelve hour days all, all the time. All the time. What it was she on something? I don't know. But here's the other thing. Aren't law enforcement supposed to turn in their guns at the end of the day? Or is that well, something that Texas. should happen? She probably oh, had that's her own true. Person. She probably had her own. You're right. You're right. Um I, keep forgetting that part that's, <laughs> yeah. good, that's a good she, point she probably, she probably was her own. Her own. um but uh it is probably I, I doubt she discharged her own her work firearm right but um so that means she's just carrying around two guns i i mean i don't know i'm not a cop right so i don't i don't, I don't she, know she, they might not have to turn in their their guns but, which is i don't know that makes me uncomfortable yeah because I don't know. Yeah, I don't but, know either. <laughs> but um, I think, listen, I mean, to go back to what you said, I, I don't think that the 10 years was fair, but. You were in you know, a jury, yeah. I'm not, I'm not to... I mean, I've sat on a jury before. Yeah. And, and what was your experience like? What um, kind of case was it? I'm curious. It was a medical case. Okay, okay. Uh, and it was all based around a, um, you know, just the, the plaintiff was going after the the person who hit her mm, okay and then yeah it was just a really weird case see i'm lucky I've but they put me on the jury but they put me on the jury i feel like they put me they put me on the jury because i was like one of the only black jurors and the plaintiff was black mm. so they thought that i would probably be a little bit more compassionate to her so i wouldn't in actuality i was probably the hardest oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> not for anything other than i was just like <laughs> You know, it's like when I used to be a lifeguard. You were a lifeguard. I was. Oh, I was. Watch uh, out I now. was. I was head lifeguard. Oh my goodness! And of course you and, were, because if you're gonna do something, you gotta be. Listen. The head. <laughs> Take me to Hogwarts. I'll be head boy. Stop it. You um, would too. And and uh, you know, I would always. I would be the like. You know, I, it was like a really rich part of Raleigh. I was in college, in a really rich part of Raleigh, and you know, I would always have black kids come into to the pool and I would always be hardest on them when it's swim tests, mm. mainly because being the head lifeguard, obviously representation matters. Right. And I would also say to them, I'm going to help you get through this, yeah. but I'm not going to, I'm not going to coddle you through right. this right. because you know, right. listen, there's only so many of us here. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it's for you. So in general, cause we can go back to the jurors and talk about this as well. So do you feel like, when black people respond that way to other black people, it's because it's like we have an expectation. Like, hey, we have to I do think, our best all the I, time. I think it is. You know, you, you, it's like it's like you know you got to be twice as good. Yeah. And, you know, I, you know, it's like my my brother the other day, for example. He he, you know, he just started a new marketing company. He wanted to do a little pitch, and uh, and I told him on the phone. I said, uh, 
I'm going to treat you like everybody else. Mm. I said, I'm not going to like, as as like, as like, and you know, my work mode is very different than my personal mode. Sometimes, sometimes the blinds blurred, but, um, I just said, so don't be alarmed when I cut you off in the middle of a conversation because Mm. I've heard enough. Right. You know, I said, but that's how I am with everybody. Right, 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 right. You know, and my dad goes, he goes, well, just, you know, like help him out. I was like, he's like, I was like, that's not how that works. He's got to learn. We all had to learn. Shit, you got to learn too. Is that how your dad was with you? No. <laughs> <laughs> so you acquired this this way of teaching on your own, right? But well, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, for the most part, yeah. we're all we're all fairly independent. Um, grow, I mean, I was fairly independent growing up, but mm-hmm. um, but I also know that you know we want what's best for other black folks and right and, and but at the same time you know we don't want to, to what you said about uh uh botham being this perfect black guy mm-hmm. you know we also don't want people to say well you got it because of x y and z like right. we don't want to pu- have holes poked in what you're doing or like those kids at the pool i would never want to pass somebody and then and then something happened to them and they say oh well you passed the swim test because the lifeguard that right. that that passed you was black right. like that's just not what right. the the perception that anybody would want right. or cloud over. But them. I think in these cases that we've seen with all of these, you know, unarmed black people that have been shot by cops and no one's been convicted, it, it always seems that they're the black people have some sort of a history. And so I thought that that theory was pretty spot on because they didn't have anything on him. Like, no, he was just murdered in his house, eating ice cream and watching football. Like it doesn't get more relatable than that. Sure, but I you mean, know? also Tamir Rice was playing, he was twelve years old, twelve years old playing in a park. Right, but then so, you have those people who are like, "Well, why did he have a toy gun?" And it's like, yeah, how many white kids you know got toy guns? They I mean, all got toy guns. Sure, but I mean, you know? at this point, you know, folks are being like, "Well, the spoon was a." <laughs> <laughs> The, the, the spoon could have been a weapon. Right, right, right. right. I mean, the people, really, the, the, oh, the people really could have reached for the stars absolutely, on this one. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but, but it's just, you know, yeah. and she said, you know, in, in her um, testimony that, you know, he got, not volatile, but he got upset. It's like, because it was his apartment. You're coming into his apartment. Why wouldn't he be getting upset? You know okay. what I mean? Like, he had every right to be upset and yelling at you because you came into his home. And then you killed him. So it, it's, it, I mean, look, she, she cried crocodile tears. I really didn't feel bad for her. The jury clearly did feel bad for her because after she was convicted and they have, you know, those, the, the sentencing uh, hearing where they bring in people to talk about character, everybody had great things to say about her. And I'm like, okay, that's all fine and dandy. But if this were reversed, I fully believe that it wouldn't be 10 years. Sure. And listen, the judge was black and yeah. it goes back to the part of the conversation we just had, which is obviously and the majority of the jury was black and the majority of the jury is black. So, you know, I, you got a black judge, black jury. I mean, mm-hmm. what can you do? Yeah, I know. And that's why, honestly, I wasn't, people were excited when they first heard that it was going to be a black judge and a majority black jury. And I didn't get excited. Not because I, um, wasn't happy that there was going to be black people on the jury. I just didn't want to make the assumption that because there were black people there, that there was going to be a harsher sentence. Uh, it's a common, kind of like with, with Barack Obama. Everybody said, well, he's a black president. That means he's going to do great things for black people. Mm-hmm. Well, the greatest thing he did was get elected. <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, I'm saying right. Barack Obama did a lot of, Oh, but many, like many there wasn't things. anything specific for the black community right, right. that we could the, like the pin down. The best thing he, he could did. have done was win. Right. Right. Everything after that. True. I mean, we got Michelle Obama out of yeah. it. Yeah. True. I'm into that. You know? Yeah. And going forward, you know, you see a lot of other black candidates across the country and uh, that may, may, may or may not have ever thought about being lieutenant governor like in, in, in um, Michigan, mm-hmm. you know? And you know that, and that that lieutenant governor of Michigan literally came out of nowhere, mm-hmm. and and you know, and so I think that I mean that's the greatest thing for for that. And now we've moved on to another race that's right. having its own other issues, yes. set of issues too. So yes, yes, yes. Um, but like we always say, representation matters. But it like does. that judge, like that judge, and that jury proved the point that we were just making, which is we're always going to have to. 
Like that judge had to be as impartial as she could have been. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you know, and then some people had issues that she hugged Amber after the trial. And listen, listen. But when have you ever seen a judge hug a convicted murderer? Let's be honest about I, this. I, I sh- I, sh- right. I mean. That's what I'm saying. It was a very odd display of, and there was a whole, you know, Twitter trending on, tr- trending on forgiveness and compassion and, you know, obviously the Christian perspective. And forgiveness is great and everything, and, and, and I get it. And forgiveness is really more for the person, not for the person that committed the act. It's for you. So when the brother forgave her, the judge, I guess, hugged her. The bailiff was help fixing her hair before she, which was too much for me. <laughs> but th- that, I was like, I'm done. But when the brother forgave her, that was for him. Because he's an 18-year-old boy who could, be, this is going to scar him for life. And he's right. choosing to just not be angry and to live his life. Now, granted, if somebody murders me, I don't want you to hug them. <laughs> I don't want you to forgive them. I want them to get sentenced and, and I want that to happen. Like, I just want to make that clear, Drexel. If I get murdered, you don't go hug the person. Um, I, I don't think that I would. <laughs> I'm just making sure. I, I, now that was his choice, but don't do that. Yeah. And I feel like, like maybe the brother just set the tone mm-hmm. and that was just something that it's, it's kind of like the Charleston what happened in when Charleston. The fam- yeah, when, when the family when, forgave right, 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 right. Yeah. So I, I think that that is just, A, how black folks are sometimes. 100%. You know, and particularly in the South. For sure. Um, and uh, B, the tone was set from the jump. Mm-hmm. And so it made everybody have to react in a way that they may or may not have re- reacted had he not done that himself. That's a good point. That is. I definitely agree with that. Because like when somebody goes and hugs somebody... Mm-hmm you almost feel compelled to do also it. Yeah. do it. Yeah. So then, so then everybody yeah. was like, like oh, so I, I guess, guess I, I gotta go yeah. hug her too. <laughs> Shit. The judge is walking on down from the bench. Well, damn, I gotta hug her too. You know, that, that also could have been in the minds of some folks. That's uh, so funny. You know? I mean, it, no, that's very, very valid. And look, there's no, no judgment on what Brant John chose to do. He's 18 years old. He lost his big brother who he loved and, and was very close to. And for him, if you had to forgive that person, that's fine. And I mean, I've forgiven people that um, people are surprised that I've forgiven. Right. <laughs> Don't say another Jack's look. <laughs> I looked at him because he knows what I'm talking about. Anyway, but you it's know. It's like an episode you... of The Office. <laughs> I'm just staring at the camera. <laughs> but, and, you know, we have to do that for ourselves. But I just feel like in this instant, it was very hard. But another thing that people brought up is that we as a people are always the ones that have to forgive. Awesome. The world can't run without black folk, man. I know, but why do we always have to be the ones to forgive? I just, we always, and I posted about this on Facebook. It's like, we always have to forgive microaggressions. We are the ones that have to forgive races. Now, granted, we don't have to, but we choose to. One, it does make our life easier if we do, but it, it's it's always put upon us to have to forgive all of this oppression and this negativity and this racism and stuff that happens to us. It's like, we get murdered. We have to apologize to you. You know, we get told we can't drink out of a fountain. I mean, we, we forgive you. I mean, we get told we can't drink out of a certain fountain. We, we you know, we forgive you when those laws are, are abolished. You know, it's just, there's always this forgiveness and compassion that our people have to exude. And it gets exhausting after a while. Yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, um, I just we we just have a little bit of a a, a a better moral compass in some air in some in some areas. That's true. And, and I and I think that is compassion is certainly something that is deeply rooted in the black community on on some levels. You know, mm-hmm. on uh, you know more 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 from a Christian standpoint. First of all, because that's just that's just deep rooted for right? sure. For um, sure. But. You know, I, and I think that carries on to just how we just, this is who, uh, we, this are. Is who we are. Yeah. You're just compassionate people. Um, and I mean, I won't say that, you know, uh, how, how the African American community has treated the LGBT community in some cases, but that's uh, a whole another podcast. But, but yeah, right. <laughs> but, you know, I think that that is certainly just a, just who we are as a people. Which I find interesting because Christianity as a whole was taught to us from slavery times. And white people, I've noticed at least, don't tend to have the same compassion and forgiveness with people of color. Right, but that's a superiority thing. True. It's that's not true. even it's not even like a compassionate thing. Right. I mean you can be they can be 
you know, it's like George W. Bush used to say, I'm a compassionate conservative. Mm. Well, what does that even mean? <laughs> so yeah. you're you so you're not hanging folks from trees, but you don't mind if they do. <laughs> is what you know what I mean? That's basically, That's basically exactly you know, what he's or, saying. Or, or 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 you don't you don't you, you you don't mind living next to a Hispanic person. But you don't want them coming over the border. See, that's right. really that's really what they're saying. what they're saying. So I'm, you know, and so you know, don't let them fool you. Listen, I or that you'll eat Mexican food. Okay, but you'll drink that tequila, right? <laughs> Where do you think all that comes? You'll from? go vacation in Cancun. Okay, <laughs> pretty soon Cancun's gonna be like, listen, if you voted for Donald Trump, just don't even come here. I need to check your vote. They really should, though, to be honest. They should start. They should just start like doing tip for tap. But like, could you imagine though? I would, I'd live for it. I'd just go, I would just buy all the tequila. Right. <laughs> you like, would too. Me. You already have like too much yes. I do. <laughs> and anybody listening, don't get any ideas. At least you. <laughs> you got to be on the list. The list. <laughs> the list. You have a list of I people do. that are allowed to have your tequila? No, I only have one bottle of tequila because I don't really drink tequila. You're but, a whiskey um, guy. I'm, yeah, I'm a whiskey yeah. guy and, and, you know, and, and vodka by... By default, because it's the gay default. But I um, can't, you know. <laughs> Not the gays. default. Yeah, Not the default. yeah. Gays go straight to vodka first, but um. Oh my goodness. Um, but, but yeah, you're. I, I think you're right. I think we as a, a people are just naturally more compassionate and loving. I mean, it's it, it's also when you well. Great. I'm going to not talk about the attacks that I've gotten on social media, but in general, I feel like interracial relationships are more accepted by black people um then yeah no yeah. I, actually i may not be right about that yeah at least my recent experience and i think too. and i think well yeah i think um, i would say i was, we're, we're I was less worried about in, in my a, husband being accepted than i was about being accepted in his family right and uh, you know tim is half puerto rican so I didn't really think. I just don't really think about it. I just didn't even think about it. But Puerto Rican, like some Puerto Ricans are. But black he's also too. Irish too. Oh, okay. he's half Puerto Rican, half Irish. So I had yeah. to deal with both sides. Right, right, right. So, but it never, it never concerned you. I just, I didn't, I did not grow up like that. Mm, interesting. To where I did, the, where I, you know, do you think it's I, because your military family? You were just, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. You know, and that makes so sense. I just never really had to like go. Okay, I mean, obviously, I think about it. Mm-hmm. But it, it it does not affect my day to day. I would say <clears throat> let me let me rephrase when I said I feel like black people are more accepting when it comes to that stuff. I think that if they know that their person is being treated like that was my whole thing with my family. They just wanted to know that John's family wasn't going to treat me poorly, right? Because of history, right. like of how white people right. have you know generally treated people of color. But when white people have a problem with it. They just have a problem with it because of the color of your skin. Right. There's I mean, really they're no just, first reason. of all, they're just nosy. Well, that too. <laughs> and, you know. Yeah, like, let's but get to the actual let's, I mean, reason. let's be real. Is yeah. Mrs. Cratchit looking out the blinds. Stop it. Mrs. Kravitz, sorry. Mrs. Kravitz. Could be Cratchit too. Cratchit <laughs> too. That's Bob Cratchit's wife. I'm just doing a little. Oh, I, a little. When you said Miss Cratchit, I like literally, I was like, I feel like I know what Miss Cratchit would look like. Picking up the <laughs> right. blinds. But it's Mrs. Kravitz from Bewitch. Yes. Looking out the blinds. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but, you know, I, you know, see, so, so, so like we're both in interracial relationships. Mm-hmm. Both of my brothers are in interracial relationships. Um, you know, so I just never really thought too much about about that uh when it comes down to like oh what am i gonna think about tim's family i also don't go home a lot and mm-hmm. i don't go, you know i don't really interact with our families too right, much right right um and you know they're some of them were at the wedding and so like you know i we're generally good but i just don't really think about the, you know when you ask me about these two cases i generally don't get wrapped up in race care. you know that about I me know too you, yeah I know you don't. so um because I, i'm thinking about a lot of other things but do you think that they're at a certain point it's just they're harder to have to get wrapped up in cuz for me i feel like i get like ptsd every time i've like seen another black person was shot by a cop i'm like i just can't take yeah, this yeah i'll give i'll give you an example of a situation <laughs> that Obviously, I had to comment on, and so there's a, there's a for those that don't know, there's a guy in West Hollywood. His name was Ed Buck. He was a Democratic donor. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, he had 
a young black male had died in his apartment. Mm. Uh, Timothy Dean, I think, was the first, or Jamel Moore was the first, and then Timothy Dean was the second. It's and fairly then, recently. This is in the last couple of years. Yeah, okay. Um, they were like, you know, he basically shot them up with methamphetamine and, and, and fentanyl and different things, and they died in his apartment. But the district attorney and LA, LAPD wouldn't arrest him and wouldn't mm-hmm. convict him. And they were just trying to like, everybody's trying to figure out why recently, uh, a third almost victim. Thankfully he escaped. Um, uh, you know, like went to the hospital, went to the ER and basically uh, he said, you know, he shot him up with basically did the same thing. Right. He was preying on these young black men. Uh, mm. not just preying on the young black men, but those who were homeless or seeking help or things like that and right, right. money. So in, 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 in Ed's mind, he was helping people mm. at the same time getting off on seeing them drugged up and doped right. up and stuff. It was very, just very like, like worst. yeah, it was just a very sick, twisted situation. And, you know, Ed, uh, recently got arrested mm-hmm. and, uh, and they, uh, they just indicted him for the past two murders, or at least one of the two, the Jamel Moore murder, uh, and uh, so that trial is still ongoing right now. You know, and that's certainly something that that I've paid attention to for a, a number of reasons. Like it's in your backyard. Yeah. Like these national stories are a little bit. There's just so much noise around these for national sure, stories. For sure. But like West Hollywood. It, but this one's like in our backyard. Right. So not only is that is it that, but it's also affecting black LGBT members of the community uh, in our backyard too. Which and is you're directly that, really connected to the Democratic Party. And it's directly to so the Democratic like, Party. Yeah. You know, and Ed actually used to be a he used to be a donor of Stonewall, which I uh, am one of the vice presidents of. So there was a lot that was wrapped up in in all right. of that. Right, and, right, right. Uh, and, you know, so obviously I paid attention to that particular mm-hmm. case. But, you know, some of these national cases, there's just so many stories going on right now. Um, and because I don't make race my day-to-day go-to, that doesn't mean I don't pay attention. That means I don't know of about course. it. Obviously, I was watching this case, that uh-huh. case we were just talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wasn't commenting on it. Right. You know, if you look at my feed, I, I, don't, I don't comment outside of what's going on in politics. politics yeah. Well, that's your thing. Um, and yeah. People know that. For yeah. Sure, for sure. So, but that doesn't mean I don't, I don't, I don't mind talking about them. It or just care. Means, you clear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it just for means sure. I just, that's just not at the forefront of my, of my I think mind. that also issues just this day and age, there is so much going on. It's impossible to comment on every single thing. Yeah. If people ask me, sure, I'm going to comment on yeah. it, you know, but I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm just not that person that just kind of brings it up. I think there, are in, and I've said it all the time. I think there are better folks to talk, to talk about, about. Th- issues like that, particularly those who have gone through it. Yeah. Like, I can't speak, and I say this all the time, I cannot speak on something that I have not experienced. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you can speak on stuff that you've witnessed, at least Wit- in that sense. That's, you know, yeah. But that's the other thing. Yeah. That either I have not witnessed mm-hmm. or I have not experienced. Right. And nine times out of ten, I've never, I've never experienced I've never seen blatant racism in my face. Mm. You know, I've never witnessed, I've never experienced it directly towards me. Mm. That has been knock on wood. Uh, that like has so been, right. Like that has been so overt. Yeah. yeah. yeah s- sure. Microaggressions here and there. Um, but I just don't take things personally right. to, a, to a certain right, extent. Right, so right. I'm just like, okay. But I think it's also a, a testament to who you surround yourself with as well. I've definitely experienced racism, definitely not as bad as some people, you know, my cousins probably that you lived in England oh, yeah. and had different experiences, you know. Obviously I grew up in Santa Barbara doesn't mean I haven't experienced it, but in Santa Barbara it was like that subtle stuff that you're like, are you being racist right now? Like, right. wait, that was racist. You right. know what I mean? That type of stuff rather than like blatantly calling me the N-word or like right. something like that. Like I haven't experienced anything that bad, but to me, for me at least in my experience those microaggressions and that subtle racism adds up right. and you really start looking and seeing like, huh? So like with cases like these, like with cops, it, it, when they're shooting these unarmed black men, it makes me think like, well, obviously they have an implicit bias. It appears to be that because I really wonder if it were reversed, for example, in this case, if it were Bob and John that were going into Amber Geiger's apartment and he shot and killed her, would he only have gotten 10 years? Probably not. 
We right. do not know, but I'm just right. going to say probably not. Right. And, you know, there are so mm-hmm. many other murders that happen across the country totally. that we don't know about. Totally. Um, and, and, uh, and yes, the the cops on black men are the ones that get the most media attention because that is what the, the country is talking about the most. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that does not negate the other the other races that are that may or may not be equally having these issues as well you know this year not that it's directly cop related but it is murder related where like the 18th transgender yes. black person has died has been murdered this year which doesn't get enough media which attention not at even all. not even enough it is just at all it's no like media attention don't want to talk at all about it. Not yeah that and they just don't know about yeah. it. So if you're saying yeah, like we know about this one case, well, how many other similar cases are like that across right, the country? Right. Uh, it, it also makes it interesting. Like, why do certain cases get more attention? Well, I mean, you got you have if you have a good, um, if you have good advocates. In this case, Jasmine Canick was a great advocate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here in L.A., uh, making sure that we knew all the time what Ed Buck was up to. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and so if you have a really good personal advocate, that that story is gonna get media yeah. attention somehow. Um, but not everybody has uh, an advocate. I was telling somebody the other day, um, who I was telling my barber the other day, where we were talking about. He was asking me, like, how do people get involved um, with politics? Or, or just knowing what's happening locally, if they're like a fan, you know, if they're like a mother with two kids and they're like a single mom and they have to work and they got to do that, like how can they get involved? And I said, well, I don't have the answer for that because obviously we have to do just a better job of um, pro- providing information to working families. Mm-hmm. Um, I said, but at the same time, nobody is going to advocate for you better than yourself or somebody in your immediate circle. Right. Right. And right. so you got to, you want a story to get out. You got to do, you got to figure it out because mm-hmm. nobody's going to do it for you. Sure. And in this case, I suspect that Botham Jean had some really, I mean, just based on his profile mm-hmm. alone, mm-hmm. probably had some pretty good advocates to keep that story. Right, and I know he's not necessarily a favorite person, but Sean King didn't bring put a big spotlight on this case, and he really helped. And I've ta- even talked to Botham John's sister, um, who's running the Botham John Foundation now on Instagram, and Sean really did help get this case the attention that it deserved. Which is funny because I didn't even I didn't even know that about this case from Sean King. So, <laughs> I, I but you don't also go. don't follow him. So. I, I don't follow him. I don't. I mean, Sean's got his own set of problems outside. Of, no, no, he does. I mean, he's got I'm his own aware. set of misogynistic aware, yeah. problems yeah. Uh, outside of what his advocacy is. You know, here's the thing. Listen, I think Sean, Sean King's. I think. Listen, I, I'm sure he, he does great work. I think the poly. I think he just got the 2016 election. Just did not really put a good light on on him, and he just got so wrapped up in like like, and then just attacking. It was just not good. It was not a good look. Yeah, you know. people have approaches that just don't just, work. Yeah, I just right. like, yeah, my, I get it. Look, guy. I get it. It's different struggles for different folks, and different things work for different people. And I, I, I try to look at the positivity, and I do. I've I've talked to Sean often, and I I do think he's doing some good stuff. But I get people saying, "Oops, I get it." Yeah, I do. I get it. Um, so the second part of this case that is extremely disturbing to me that I want to touch on just for a little bit, because I don't have too much information. Nobody does. But one of the key witnesses in the Amber Geiger, Botham John case, Joshua Brown, on Friday night, he was murdered at point blank in the parking lot of that building. Now, my husband brought to my attention, he was like, God, this apartment building cannot get a break. <laughs> like, like, just what is going on, Right. Um, but it's very suspicious because he was a key witness and truly his testimony made a huge difference for the jury. If you didn't watch the whole case, I highly recommend going back because the things that he said were very vital him. And there was another woman that ended up filming a lot of the aftermath of, of, of Botham shooting, but he was found murdered, um, in the parking lot. And now they're trying to investigate, of course, what happened. Of course, everybody thinks that this was a hit on him. People of course are blaming the Dallas PD. I do not blame them for wanting to blame the Dallas PD, but it's very, very suspicious. Yeah. I mean, I don't know anything t- too much. I don't, I don't, there's not much other than that, other than that yeah. information, but yeah. you know, and it does set a dangerous precedent for 
again, we don't know any of the facts. We don't know who who the hit was on. We don't know. We're just speculating on like what what's happening. I want to but it does yet. set a dangerous precedent for witnesses mm-hmm. in the justice system going forward if people feel like they cannot be honest. Be honest <laughs> yeah. in public. Like, like yeah, it's like so now my safety is is being put into question when I'm trying to do the right thing. Like I was there when someone was shot and killed and I want to testify in their honor to make sure that the person that murdered them gets the correct sentencing. Right. And now I lost my life because I did the right thing. Right. It, I do. I, I can't blame witnesses in the future for not wanting to come forward because of things like this. And I'm sure this happens more often than we realize. Right. I'm sure it does. It's a scary thing to think, though, that you're trying to help somebody. I mean, it's like out of a movie, you know, or like something on Scandal. Right. Where it's just like witness tampering or I mean, how to get away with murder. Trump it's like, did probably order the hit. Stop it. <laughs> he's not smart enough. That He's got smart people. Or, well, I say smart, but he's got people around him that might be. I don't know I'm if they're kidding. smart, though. No. No, they're, they're, the, they're, they're not everybody very that's surrounding that man just uh, I can't even get into him right now because <laughs> if he has one more typo in his tweets I'm gonna scream listen education's important friends reading is fundamental <laughs> <laughs> apparently not to him yeah but so uh, we're gonna be following this uh, part of the story very closely because I'm just I was numb when I saw it because I didn't I just couldn't believe. I was like, there's no reason. I get why people think, okay, this was a hit. This was an assassination. He was being silenced. He was murdered. They were upset. They think it's somebody on the Dallas PD that probably worked with Amber. I mean, yes, we're speculating. We have no facts other than that he was found murdered. And he was shot in his mouth and his chest, which to shoot somebody in their mouth, it's like, how much do you devalue human life to just walk up to somebody and shoot them in their mouth? Um, yeah. I wonder if there was... Um, I wonder if there was footage that's what i'm wondering i'm like if it's in a garage of an apartment complex how do you not have cameras well unless they figured out how to do something with the cameras i'm telling you if you watch enough tv you can figure out how to do some stuff i know it's a shame i know i mean i'm a lawyer and a doctor thanks to law and order and Grey's anatomy but (laughs) (laughs) i mean i'm a heart surgeon okay they're not even doctors they even said i could never do any of these procedures yeah you well, could. I mean, I learned a lot. Stop I mean, it. You know, I can suture. I can. Stop. You could do a tracheotomy. I can do a tracheotomy. <laughs> I can. Uh... <laughs> oh my gosh! Please, I, I do not put my life in your hands. District if anything attorney. Happened. You are not a district attorney. Uh, too. Olivia Benson. Um, I'm a lieutenant. I mean, just the pos- I mean, just everything so, that I learn from all the from TV. all the TV. You watch a lot of shows too. So I you do. have a lot of different careers. I there. do. I do between suits and. I mean, I'm a lawyer on so many things to suits and how to get away with murder. Listen, I know how to do that. How to get away with yeah. murder. <laughs> 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 you know, oh my gosh. But, you know. So yeah. Um, oh my gosh, you're so funny. Well, let's have to see what happens because I think this whole thing is disturbing. Yeah, it's a little it's a little it's a little weird. Um, and to say the least. And uh, and I just hope people are just as loud about getting justice for this situation with Joshua as they were about the forgiveness, because forgiveness became a huge conversation, which I think it should be a huge conversation, but we can't have forgiveness be at the helm of this conversation and then let justice take a back seat. That's right. what's very important. I think we're forgetting the justice aspect of this entire situation. Um, so I want to know your guys' thoughts about this case. Um, if you think the Amber got a fair uh, sentencing or if you think it should have been longer and what you think is going to happen with this Joshua Brown case. If you, I mean, they better find the people that did it. They got to go with the cameras. Like, I don't know how in 2019 there's not some sort of footage in that parking lot to be able to tell us what happened to this so maybe man. they, Maybe they, I don't I mean, I don't know what type of apartment complex. It seemed like a in. pretty busy one. Yeah. At least from the photos, like it was like a, a pretty big one. But in how many? How, but the other part of that is just on that witness. I wonder if he was the only neighbor that heard anything like that. Well, no, there was another woman that. Where was she at? She didn't get shot in the mouth either. She got fired though. Apparently. What? Yeah. There's some other stuff. She, oh. There's some other stuff. She got fired for what? For her job. For what? Because they like didn't want the attention. I guess I heard. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? 
That's yeah, crazy. so they were the two main witnesses. She got death threats, she said, like anonymous death threats for uh, for uh, testifying against Amber. And people um, are crazy. People are crazy. The people ain't got nothing else to do. But if it's the Dallas PD, I'm telling you, that's where you got to look first. And don't let them be in charge of the investigation. Let me say well, that. Well, and that's the other thing about the Ed Buck thing here is that now it's now it's a fe- now it's a gone to the, the it's federal it's, it's federal, a federal so. indictment. Yeah, oh. we have to take it out of L.A. You have to because you know how many people are probably listen. Connected I to I this is not an indictment on the LAPD. This is just you know some things just are better handled. You can't keep it in house for can't everything. keep yeah especially especially something a case that has gone on this long. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for listening. Drexel, thank you so much for joining of me course. today. And we will definitely have you back closer we get to primary elections and getting Donald Trump out of that White House. Yeah, make sure you guys are all registered to vote. Isn't uh, it too late? No, it's never too late. They can still register? I thought there was a deadline. There's always a deadline, depending on what state you're in. Just check your voter registration, A, and then uh, yes. you know check your deadlines. And in some primary case, not here in California, if you are not a registered Democrat, uh, you certainly cannot participate in the primary um or you know so if you're if you're an independent or a non-party preference you know certainly check your the rules of your state here in california if you're no if you're no party preference you can still vote okay. in the primary um but that's I mean, not every state's gonna right allow right, that right. but yeah. just please register because lord have mercy Lit, we, yes. we don't have time to mess around with this I, one coming I know. Up. I mean, it's just a little. I mean, I mean, we might we might be going in the twenty 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 with the with a president Pence or maybe a president Pelosi, but at this point, but we'll see. But what happens. people are like, oh, I'm going to digress a little bit before we end the show. People are like, ah, we've, we're going to have Mike Pence. We're going to have Mike Pence for twenty minutes. It's Literally. fine. He, but listen, the stuff that's coming out about him, he knew some of the stuff that was on the phone. Right, but that's what I'm saying. People are worried, like, oh, I don't have Pence as president. I was like, you're literally going to have president for 20 seconds but it's even with, but even but even with mike pence as president he doesn't have the house of representatives he doesn't have congress he doesn't have the congress to do anything he don't have anything that's what i'm saying like nobody even donald knows trump can't even donald trump can't even do anything and you know because he doesn't have the house of representatives so but nobody cares about mike pence i think he's nobody's gonna even want to talk about mike pence nobody's gonna put him on camera nobody likes him either yeah donald trump is loud and he's always making statements that are just so ridiculous that's why people give him attention what's yeah. mike gonna do mike ain't gonna do nothing that's what he I'm gotta saying. go ask mother <laughs> And on that note, we will talk to you guys next week. All right, bye. bye. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at We Need to Talk the Podcast and Twitter at underscore We Need to Talk underscore.